Hey guys, with fall around the corner and winter coming up soon, we got a lot of beanies to work on. I'll show you guys how I do them. Stay tuned. Today we are doing a handful of beanies. I'm just doing three words on the beanies, just on the front, so it's very simple. It is Body Shop Gym. This is the name of the gym that I'm making these beanies for, so it makes my job easier since we're not doing any crazy fancy design or anything, just the simple text. So with that, I have all my supplies and the beanies laid out. I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of walk you guys through everything. So this is what we're working on today. We have the beanies here provided to me by the customer. I believe these are the Sportsman SK or SP12s. I'll put it down in the description when I look it up, but pretty simple, not too many. Um, we got the black ones, we're gonna be doing the white embroidery on here, and then with the gray ones, we'll be doing the black embroidery here. Same exact design, so it should be a pretty simple job to get knocked out here. Shouldn't take more than a couple hours. Um, biggest part is gonna be hooping that, which I'll show you guys in a second. One thing I wanted to mention is that these were provided to me by my customer. If you are accepting pieces by your customer, you do wanna be a little bit cautious because sometimes you can damage the garment and then it becomes whose fault is it, who's paying to replace it, whatever, whatever. So you wanna make sure it's very clear with your customer up front, you know, if something happens, especially if they're like limited pieces. These are wholesale items. So I'm not super concerned because I can replace these for a couple bucks, no problem. So in this case, if I damage it, I'm replacing it out of my cost. But I mean, for example, if you have somebody who gives you a jacket that, you know, they've had for several years, if something happens to it, you won't be able to replace it easily. Or on the flip side, something you may be able to get but might be expensive. So if somebody's giving you a Carhartt jacket or a very expensive garment, that's gonna be expensive to replace if you're only adding like a couple dollars worth of embroidery. So for my sake, I'm not super concerned because these are wholesale items, like I said. I can get them replaced fairly cheap and it is a simple job. So I don't think I'll mess it up. But again, if I do, I have a backup plan. You wanna make sure that's clear with your customer up front. With that being said, let's move on to the supplies here. For the supplies, I'm gonna be using my five and a half inch Mighty Hoops. I do have two of them here. I do wanna get a couple more so when these are both running, I can get the next pair ready. But for now, I'll make do. For the stabilizer, I'm gonna be using two pieces of this very heavy, I think it's a three ounce tearaway stabilizer. Like I said, it's just gonna be text. Depending on the design, you might wanna change this up. I do have a separate video where I did some beanies. They were a knit type of beanie, so I wanted more stabilization. I went ahead and used cutaway, and that's gonna hold up the best, but for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna be using tearaway for this project. For a topping, I do have this water-soluble stabilizer that I got at Joann's. This is a very lightweight one, so what I like to do is just double it up, but it does wash off very easily with just a dab of water, so that's why I prefer this. I've got a whole bolt of it. I am gonna cut this into little pieces, so it's gonna be easier for me during the whole process. Overall, that's gonna be the supplies I'm using. Extra supplies that I may or may not use is this backing holder. Uh, depending on how I get this stabilizer on here, this may or may not be a helpful tool to have to keep the stabilizer in place. If not, I'm probably gonna use tape just to hold it in place when I get the hoop into the beanie. And other than that, I do have scissors and then again, a couple tools to clean things up. So I'm gonna get you guys propped up. Like I said, I do need to cut this down into a bunch of pieces. That way it's just easier for me so I'm not cutting it as I go. I just have everything ready to go as I'm working through. And then I'll show you guys the process of how I hoop everything and we can get embroidering. As you saw, I got all my water soluble stabilizer cut, so that way I can just have the sheet ready to go when I am hooping everything. Um, but now I need to figure out how I want to get these hoops. So like I said, I'm using two sheets of this three ounce tearaway stabilizer. Typically it's used for caps. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna put them here and line it up with these dots so I can get it as straight as possible. But I'm not sure how well the backing holder is gonna keep it in place. So we'll see. It's not too bad. I'm just trying to use these dots as uh, little points to align the paper to get it straight. Um, if it wasn't working, I'll, I had tape as backup and I might switch, but I think this should be fine for now. I like to make sure I'm using the front, not that it matters too much, but essentially there's a tag typically on the inside here. That tag is on right around here. So for me, mentally, this is gonna be the front. So I like to take it inside out. Remember, this is the front still. This is the front of the beanie. Pull the cap inside out. And this, this is still the front. So this is the front, this is up. And once you have that, you can simply just put the 
hoop inside. And the reason I was trying to get this stabilizer even with the hoop, so that way I can just pull the cap or the beanie down to get that as straight as I can. So this way I know it's square to the machine as it embroiders. And essentially you need to remember here, the text goes right here. This is the top of the beanie, this is the bottom. So you should be reading it as it's like this. The reason I'm emphasizing this is because I've messed this up and I still do every once in a while. And realistically, the best way to do this is you can mark it so you know which way is up. But this is a great one, but I did it upside down. So for example, if I take it out, we're in the same orientation. See how this doesn't flip, this should still be up. So when you do the design, just make sure you do it so it's legible this way. And then once that's set, like I said, I'm gonna be using two sheets of stabilizer on top. I think I'm just gonna take one and fold it in half. And then to hoop it, I'm gonna go like that from one side, hold the water soluble stabilizer and let it click onto the other side, make sure it's all the way down and then pull the backing. You wanna make sure to pull this off so it doesn't fall off when you're embroidering, but that is good to go. I'm gonna throw this onto the machine, but first I'm gonna show you the artwork. Like I said, it's very simple, but I'll take you guys over there. All right, so we got the design ready. Like I said, it's just three words, body shop gym, very straightforward, very direct. Um, and I have it all loaded up. This is my five and a half by five and a half Mighty Hoop. The size is gonna be about 4.2 inches. That fits barely in the parameters, but I wanna still leave that sizing. You can go outside of this just a hair, but if you do, you risk having the needle run into the hoop itself. So I try to keep it inside the little dotted line where it knows it has its own limits. For the active feed, I dropped it down to 12. Again, I like to watch this chart here, and as it changes, I'll kind of adjust that, but for the most part, I keep the maximum off. If I'm having any issues with the minimum, say if I'm having thread breaks, I'll bump it up. If I'm getting false thread breaks, I'll bring it down. So that's kind of how I use this chart here. Stitches, we're looking less than 5,000 stitches, so it should be fairly quick. I'm gonna bump this up a little bit. I'll probably run it at around 800. So pretty straightforward job. That's the artwork. I've already put the arms onto both machines. All I have to do now is get these hooped up. I already have one. Gonna get the other one hooped up, put them into the machines and I'll be good to go. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I do have one running right now, but I wanted to update you guys on how I'm setting things up. I'm still doing everything pretty much the same. Two pieces of tearaway stabilizer, the water soluble stabilizer double overed on itself. So kind of two pieces of that as well. The five and a half inch by five and a half inch backing holder for the Mighty Hoop system is working well. So I am just using that instead of the tape right now to hold the stabilizer in place. But one thing I'm doing additionally to get everything aligned and make sure the design is centered is I'm adding a dot on the water soluble stabilizer. Just a little tiny dot, enough for me to see when I'm lining it up with the laser to make sure everything's in place. So I'm gonna show you guys that real quick before I get this next one put onto the machine. So what I'm doing here is essentially these beanie cuffs are about eight to nine centimeters. They'll vary between each one. So like this one might be a little bit longer. This one's like eight and a half. Essentially what I'm doing is taking that divided by two, which puts me at about four, four and a quarter, and then quickly getting the tip of that and just putting a little tiny dot. Let's see if I can get that in the camera. So a little simple dot like that. It doesn't have to be centered because I know everything is centered and squared in the hoop. So all I have to do is get the laser next to this dot and then it should be good to be centered here. So give me two seconds, I'll bring you guys over to the machine. So let's see, can I get this to focus? There's my dot and when I hit that, there's my laser. If I adjust it, see I'm getting further away and then further too high. So I wanna get that basically on the dot. So that looks like it's good to go. I'll go ahead and hit go and then send this. And that should be centered. I'll show you guys the ones I've done so far. 
This is basically the finished product minus I need to go through and get water on here. I'll just take a damp cloth and rub that off. I'll take you guys through the process of that as well. It is fairly simple. Again, I still have a couple more of these and then I got the grays to do. When we're done with all of them, I'll show you guys the process of cleaning these up. All right, so we are almost done. This is the last one I need to get embroidered. I have been cleaning these up as I've been going, so I am ready to get the water soluble stabilizer off once I get these two cleaned up. I'll take you guys through that process right now. Last step that I have for all these beanies, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's not too bad, is putting water on the water soluble stabilizer to get that all removed. You can go through with tweezers and peel it all off individually. It does take a little bit of time. This way is a little bit quicker, just kind of depends on what you prefer. What I like to do, you can use a rag and dip it in some water. I do have this corner here a little bit damp, but what I like to use actually is just this little, I think it's like a medical sponge that I use, soak it with water, and then kind of let it absorb into the stabilizer here. And as you can see, it is already starting to come off with that water. And then once it kind of gets to this point, I like to just take a towel and then brush off all the excess. So once you're done with all that, it will be a little bit damp. I'm gonna lay this out on the side over here and then go through all of these separately, get it all cleaned up. It only takes a couple seconds as you saw right there. Once I'm all done, I'll go ahead and bring you guys back with a price breakdown on how much each one of these costs, how much I'm charging for these, and then the total roundup. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Here we go, I have all the beanies laid out here. Some of them are still air drying. I'll let them sit overnight because I'm delivering these to my customers tomorrow. Just wanna make sure they're not damp to the touch. Obviously you don't wanna give a wet beanie or wet garment to your customer but that's kind of the trade off with using the water soluble stabilizer. Uh, the reason you use that, I guess I, I should say, is to prevent the stitching from sinking into the beanie since they're so plush and it kind of helps keep those stitches uh, above the, the piece, the garment, whatever you're doing. Alternatively, what I've seen a lot of people do, and I might try some of these in the future, but they use a, essentially like a tack down stitch where it's a thinner stitch behind the entire area that you are embroidering to flatten it down and then do the actual design or the actual text, whatever on top of it. So that would prevent you from having to use the water soluble, but it does add extra stitches, which is extra time. So either way, um, I think as long as you know what you're doing, you can get the job done fairly easily. For this portion, I wanted to break down the cost, the profit, all that stuff for you guys, if you did have any questions. For the beanies, I'm $0 because I didn't buy them myself. The customer supplied them and I didn't mess any up, so I didn't have to replace any. So that's always good. The biggest cost I had is gonna be the water soluble stabilizer. Additionally, I have the cap stabilizer that I used on the inside. And then bobbin and thread, like I said last video, it's not, it really doesn't matter that much. I didn't even use the entire bobbin for this whole thing. For the water soluble stabilizer, I broke it down to about 70 cents per beanie. Um, this is the stabilizer I got from Joann's. It's about $4 for and some change per yard. I bought a whole entire bolt and I know they often run sales 30, 50% off on uh, the stabilizers. Uh, so I know for a fact that's when I bought that, but I just used the price they have on the website right now. Did a little bit of math, broken down, broke down that yard because I did cut it up into probably about maybe a little less than a foot per beanie, whatever. So I got about 70 cents each. As for the cap stabilizer, I did buy that in bulk as well. Um, each sheet is about five cents. So use two of them on these 10 cents on them. All in all, I probably just rounded up to about a dollar expense put into it, not including time. So ultimately making five bucks, putting about a dollar in, you're, you know, multiplying your money by five, uh, obviously you don't have to take into consideration how much time it took you and everything. So at the end of the day, I made uh, about $120, uh, spending about $24 in expenses. So about $96 is what I'm gonna be putting in my pocket for this job. Ultimately, I wanted to record this to show you guys the whole entire process of the beanies and this last portion, I know it's long, I'm sure a lot of you guys clicked off, but this is to cover you know the business side that I wanted to talk about. So. How much money can you make from it? How much are you spending on it? All that good stuff. So at the end of it, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them as best I can. And I do check the comments often. Um, either way, I hope you found this entertaining, maybe even learn something. Um, regardless, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.